Welcome back to the channel. Um, and up on the bench today is the little uh, Mitsubishi TV I got from We Love CRTs. This particular TV works and it was used on my vintage gaming night and it's got a, a pretty decent little picture. What I want to do today is to uh, op crack it open, look at all the capacitors. I want to go around the power board uh, and, and actually check to see whether there's any... Um, small capacitors that are showing signs of distress um, and just generally go through it and just make sure everything, I'm happy with it uh, and see whether we can improve the picture. It, it's got a reason, quite a reasonable picture but I'm sure that I can get a, a, a better looking one. Um, I, I also want to have a look on the uh, the circuit board on that side. Uh, there's also one which is bowed slightly I think on this side. I want to actually see what I can do with that and look for any dodgy solder joints. Uh, I really just want to go through the whole thing uh, before uh, the last video which came out with this one um, it was about seeing whether it worked uh, and whether we could get it working and stuff like that. Uh, this is now actually about essentially preservation uh, to make this uh, TV last as long as I can. So let's crack on, let's get this thing open um, and uh, start assessing the boards. So once open, we can actually see that these boards are slightly warped. Now, they actually do get held uh, in place by the back cover but this board in particular as you can see down there uh, it's quite badly warped so what I want to do is go basically go through all of the solder joints go through all of the uh, capacitors you can see one I'm poking up there uh, and actually see what's going on so what I'm going to do is just charge the tube and also uh, uh, just go through the capacitors on this board and uh, sort of discharge them so that I can safely handle the board. There's also uh, looks like some sort of residue or corrosion at the bottom. Um, this one here, yeah, it's a bit wobbly. So yeah, uh, I just want to sort of just check it all out and see what I have to replace. Gloves, safety. So we're now going to uh, discharge the tube itself. I've not done this one. So what I want to do is I want to hook onto the metal wires that run across the DAG. Uh, and then I want to attach a, screw, a suitable screwdriver. And then we then put that underneath. pushing up against the actual up the anno cap connection so what we can then do is and there we go it's quite dirty around there so yeah make sure that's good yep let's have a look and see what big capacitors are floating around here let's up. Not that many actually. Oh, there's one or two on that side. Yeah. So uh, we've got one here. Yeah, that seems fine. That's fine. Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, okay. So there's nothing really on that. That's uh, I can even just double check that one there, just to make sure. It just looks like water ingress of some sort. I can see some dirt and crap and stuff in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take all the connections off, noting which connections go where. Uh, so that's the degaussing coil uh, that looks like it goes up to one of the other boards that looks like could go uh, which way does that go 
that goes up into the tuna side. Uh, this goes up to the neck board, which we can take off. Slowly pull the TV apart. Looks like all of the connections uh, are shaped, so which is good. Oh, that was that was tough. Yeah. So the connections there are actually uh, one pin is a bit further spaced so that you can't get that round the wrong way. Take the dag out of the way. The dag connection is very, very important uh, for the tube. So this is the earth connector that goes to the actual there. If you run a tube like that, it will start sparking and break, basically break it. All of the, I'm, I'm just noting the orientation of the connections uh, and also the shape of the connections. And by the looks of it, Mr. Bishi actually did a good job on um, shaping the connections so that you can't put them in the wrong way. Some manufacturers were terrible. How they even remotely made them user friendly to service. Uh, I don't know. Uh, let's just move this plastic standoff for the cables. Let's put that to one side. And then by the looks of it, the final connection on the power board is the oak. Now you've got to be careful of that end. Right. You've got to be careful because again it's very easy to pull it and yank it and hit something. Uh, uh, trust me I've done that. Um, I don't want to get rid of this because I don't want a mess of wires. Um, not very approving of these metal wires around the high voltage these wire wrap things it really should be plastic and we have freed the power board up as you can see it's quite dusty uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a bit of a clean and then I'm going to go look through those capacitors and see what ones look awful I see one or two nasty ones uh, hopefully I've got some spares and we'll sort that out. There's no capacitors on the neck board. Some TVs do have that uh, capacitor on there. They're normally very high voltage, 250 volts, 500 volts, something like that. So you have to be careful with them. So it's quite very dusty. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a brush and give it a little bit of a. I did give it a bit of a clean. Normally I would bring the hoover in and the vacuum cleaner, but this is a small amount of dust, I don't mind this. It'll be picked up at other points. Uh, get rid of all the dust bunnies. This side, you can see how dusty and crappy it is. Yeah, I wish I'd actually got the hoover now, but I, uh, I normally do use a hoover, but I can see some, very, uh, some of these uh, resistors are a bit baked. This is a reasonably high R set. It's still got plenty of life left in it. I want to make it last as long as I can. My view on capacitors is that um, anywhere where there's um, they're hot or they're small, uh, I tend to replace. Um, this is not about economic repair with these sets anymore. It's about actually making and preserving them for as long as you can. Uh, and if that means replacing a few capacitors, uh, that's great. I've actually seen uh, capacitors uh, which have failed and caught, um, and taken out expensive transistors and uh, ICs and all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, these big old, um, I think I even actually have got one, D1426, I've got a spare somewhere for that. But yeah, it's difficult to get hold of these, the, the, these uh, uh, types of uh, chips and, and uh, power transistors. Um, so if it, one of these capacitors decides to short circuit um, or even go open circuit and then it then causes stress on another component that makes that fail, um, why keep them in there? I would rather put new in there and know that actually they're uh, good quality capacitors and, and put stuff in and actually look after it. Um, my view changed from 
about six, seven years ago, when I would only replace the stuff I, I felt was necessary. Uh, and, you sh and you should take your own views on that. Uh, this is just my preference. Um, I, I really want to try and preserve uh, the equipment I've got, so I tend to um, uh, do a bit more than uh, some people do, which is, again, I just replace them. Uh, the amount of TVs, I've actually done a full cap replace and they've been running now for years. Uh, and I know that there would have been other problems and other issues. So, I don't know whether you can see, but here, where my thumb is moving, uh, that PCB is quite dark. And that basically shows there's been a lot of heat on in that area. Yeah, a lot of stress on that PCB uh, and those, tra uh, those uh, resistors. And that this one here, this capacitor here, I would certainly be replacing. Uh, 10 microfarad microfarad at 100 volts. Uh, that's here, 22 microfarad at 160, definitely replacing that. The 220 at 100 volts, if I've got it, uh, I'll replace it. Um, yeah, so there's not that many electrolytics on here. Uh, I'll definitely be replacing the smaller ones here. Um, so, yeah, these ones here. Um, yeah, that's not a problem. I'd be do definitely be doing that. That's up to temperature. Make sure that ooh, we're not in shot here. There we go. Right, so let's crack on and get this done. This one's got some corrosion on it, and this is the 4.7160. Anything with a uh, low microfarad and high voltage tends to run very hard. This is a Nishicon, um, and yeah, so anything sort of, yeah, uh, low microfarad and high voltage, it's a pretty good bit that it's going to be pissing, and that has started to pee. So, there we go, and let's have a look under the board. Yeah, it's just started to go, so we've caught it just in time. And that is the power board all done. So it just needs soldering up. I said I tend to use uh, lead solder uh, because it just flows better uh, and it doesn't crack so much. I've, I've really found that anything without lead in really suffers with heat cycles. Uh, yes, okay, uh, you, I'm around this stuff quite a bit, so I tend to try and be careful about when I'm touching it, but... Mm, it's a very good idea. To, ooh, oh, that doesn't look good. That's not a great one. That's better. Um, it's a very good idea to then double check the polarity. Uh, make sure everything's all good. As I was putting them in, I was noting the polarity as I took the, the caps out and checked them against the board. Sometimes you'll see a plus there, and actually it's a, it's a silk uh, screen printing error, and it should be there. So always go with what's in there, uh, in the actual TV. Uh, the actual tap cap you take out and we're done um, just get rid of these put them in the bin so that's the power board done and I'm just starting to look around the solder joints and see if I can see anything that looks nasty surprised but actually it's not there's no sign of it even in the high in the heat areas what I am going to do is these resistors here I'm just going to reflow them anyway um, they, they get very hot uh, and it creates uh, large heat cycles 
That, that one there has, yeah. Mm. Okay. Let me see whether I can zoom in. Look at that one there. Let's see whether I can zoom in any further. There we go. That is a dodgy solder joint. Yeah. Just there. It's up to you if you need a, ma a magnifying glass or something like that. My eyes are still fairly decent. Uh, it may not be for very much longer because I'm approaching 50. Anywhere in this area here where there's been a lot of heat. Yeah, there's a, uh, a little ring around that um, transistor there. On that connection, so that's good. Caught that one. Some TVs I, I care about, I will actually do a full reflow of the whole board. What I'm going to do, because I do actually care about this TV, uh, is just reflow all of the ones in, in the heat areas. If it winks at you, just reflow it. For the cost of the solder and your time, you could be chasing your tail on something and it could just be a, a bad joint. So, I can not even see one or two up here. That one there, it's got the ring of doom around the around the connections. Yeah. It might be this whole set is like this. Yep, this one here. It's got heat cycle damage. And that one. Um, and that one. There we go. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much all of the, the power board done. I'm then going to have a look at the netboard. And again, the netboard also suffers from heat damage as well. It's something that um, you end up with dodgy solder joints and all sorts of problems. Uh, I've had a TV which there was no. Uh, a, only one colour working and I thought okay it's a bad tube it turned out to be a couple of uh, d damaged solder joints this has got a conformal coating on it as well which can sometimes be difficult uh, to reflow so let's try that yeah, it's not taking the conformal coating in fact I've got yeah I've got dodgy solder joints on this as well um, I'll show you one of the power resistors oh, sorry power uh, transistors. Um, as you can see there's some pretty ropey uh, uh, solder joints there and it's the same on the other ones as well so I said the conformal coating is really making it hard to get um, to resolder so I've done the three color power transistors for red green and blue um, I think everything else is all right on this I won't take it much further so yeah so that is looking a lot better I'm just going to give this another clean what we can do is we can now uh, I want to give this a little bit more of a clean up um, and then um, I'm going to install it back in the uh, the main board, uh, in the main TV. Okay, so I'm going to put the, the power board and the net board back into the TV and I'm going to start it up to make sure everything's okay. And then go on to this board here. It's basically to make sure that everything, I haven't introduced an error or a problem. Uh, and I can always go back to this one. Um, try not to change too much in one go test it make sure it's okay and then move on to the next board and so on don't just recap the whole thing or change a load of components in one go because you're just going to be chasing your tail trying to work out which component went wrong just like that i'll clean that up later on where next okay um deflection connector for the deflection uh, is that on there so uh, I really don't like these metal twist ties. Um, I might actually get some bag ties and do it that way. Right, put. There we go. 
Everything's back into the, where it should be. Just going to push the board in a little bit. Shall we test it? See what happens. Does it blow up? Have I just ruined a perfectly good set? Actually, I haven't because there was a lot of uh, dodgy solder joints all in all, both boards, and it would have stopped working at some point. So, okay. Let's turn this around. Oh, hang on, I need to sort out, clean this area here. The rubber of the anode. Often people seal these with silicon. That is a very good idea. Um, it uh, stops moisture from getting inside and causing arcing. Put the anode cap back on. Cool. Let's test it. Let's test it. Cross fingers. Cross fingers. I really like this little television. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. Okay, so that is the Degorza basically running. So okay. I can leave it. There, let's just let's just go bypass. I can't be asked with this. Let's just do it. If it's going to go bang, it's going to go bang. Cross fingers. <gasps> there we go. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Marvellous. Okay, let me just get a uh, video source. This picture seems pretty good. Uh, let's try the uh, colour. That's fine. That's vertical hold. That's sharpness. Yeah. Very nice. And audio still works. So that's cool. Uh, everything's all working. That board is much healthier now with new caps in it. Um, less chance of it actually uh, throwing some weird ass um, voltages all over the uh, the rest of the other boards when they fail, or taking out transistors which are impossible to get hold of, or very difficult. So yeah, very good. So next stage is to um, do another board in here. So we'll probably do the one on this side. Uh, and uh, yeah, it will. Um, I don't need to uh, discharge the tube on this one uh, because it's actually running from. Uh, it's doing other other voltages and other things on that. So the main flyback is on the main board. So yeah, all right. Let's uh, let's get on with that one.
Okay, so um, the other power board has been uh, recapped. There are a ton of uh, dodgy solder joints all over the place. How it ran, I don't know. Um, let's power it up. Are we ready? I think. Yeah, we've got we've got stuff there. Let's power it up. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Turn the power on. And here we go. Please. Oh, there we go. Yeah. And we're up and running again. The picture's a little soft. So I'm going to change... Um... Oh yes, I forgot you're uh, stuck in uh, 60 hertz, not 50. So I'm going to swap you out now and I'm going to put a... Uh... Uh, a test disc in uh, and we should start setting this up again well the camera cut out there but that's as sharp as I'm going to get it um, it does look uh, pretty good actually so if I turn the sharpness to the middle and then to that then there and then that yeah you can see the two megahertz really come in when I turn the sharpness up yeah very happy with that that all looks pretty good um, so it's had pretty much all the capacitors replaced on the uh, deflection and power um, uh, um, flyback board and then the one here is the main power board uh, which pushes, uh, supplies the rest of the set so I've been making a mistake there where I thought that was the power board no actually that is the power board there and then that's the deflection and um, uh, high voltage board. Uh, there's that, this board here, there's a ton of capacitors on there. What I want to do next is actually take this um, board out and just look at the connections for all of the uh, buttons just to see whether there's any dodgy solder joints and find out what that's all about there. There's a, either something missing or you have to use a screwdriver. So that's the next job. There we go, after some tweaking and changing of stuff, I finally worked out what that is, you just put a screwdriver in there, that's fine. I wanted to check that nobody hadn't broken it off and I was going to short something out. Um, yeah, it all seems to be pretty good. I'm just going to um, see whether I can tune this in slightly better. There we go. Yeah, it's it's reasonable. It's got a relatively high amount of hours on it. It isn't bad. It really isn't bad. TV's all back together again and running quite nicely. Uh, the remote's not working. I'm just sort of super gluing it back together again. Um, yeah, I think I've got to try and somehow find another one. Um, yeah, uh, TV is absolutely fine. The picture's a little soft, but it's it's all right. It's okay. Um, nice solid deflection. Uh, the convergence is excellent. Um, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Um, again, I probably need to actually take that 
the tuner board out and all of that and just recap that and that will help that quite nicely because I think it's more to do with the tuner than um, uh, any uh, focusing problems or stuff like that. So thanks for watching. Uh, please like, share, subscribe uh, and I will see you on the next video.